do this uh, today, I'm actually at the edge of my uh, deck on my studio looking out on the river. You can hear it in the background. It's a uh, early August day, fairly early in the morning. And that's what I want to capture in this uh, piece. So I'll be selecting the color and the pigments, the approach to the painting and so on to try to capture that mood. The first thing that I want to do though is actually do a, a drawing. And this is typical of what I do when I'm uh, skiing in the winter or when I'm in the back country in the summer. Many times I'll actually do a black and white drawing, take it back to my studio, and then select the colors that are best going to express the emotion and the mood that I want to capture. So I'm going to finish a drawing here and then we'll get started. All right, now that we've uh, finished this sketch, and I can call it a working sketch that I'm going to refer to as I move on, we'll take a look at that. And from this sketch, it's black and white, I could make this any time of day. I could, uh, it could actually be winter or autumn. I could, just depending on the colors that I select on the color wheel, what mood and what atmospheric quality I want in the painting, I can take it any way I want to go with this palette. So uh, this, particular piece, I want to have the feeling of kind of quiet stillness, early morning light, a soft quality to the painting. So I'll start to select the colors here in a second, but first I want to talk about a few things I think about when I start a finished painting. These are just some things to think about. Uh, when you're out and um, normally I don't work from photographs at all. I work from drawings. I feel I can get more of the personal mark that I want in the painting and uh, listen to that inner vision and spirit rather than referring to a photograph. But everybody works differently. So regardless of the way you work, the subject matter that you work on, these are some things to think about. So I'm going to dive in and I'm going to wet most of the paper. I've actually toned the paper uh, right there at the water's edge with a little Naples yellow. It kind of looks a little dark now, but once I put this color on and get some value going, it's going to come to life. And it will just be a soft yellow that will look like morning light bouncing off the water. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, just wet this paper. This is 300 pound paper. It's that Richeson premium paper. Uh, rough. 300 pound. And uh, I've cut it down to uh, a size. Uh, I like to work large. Normally I'm using a 3 inch flat brush to um, apply the water right now. So I'm going to start with the Naples yellow and a little ultramarine violet. And that's going to be kind of a common tone that will work with this composition. And we'll kind of get that washed in throughout most of the composition. And then I'm going to start charging other color in. So I'm going to push that down just a little more to the violet side. Keeping the value fairly kind of a middle, middle value. I want that feeling of kind of soft morning light. So we'll just take that and get a little bit of that quality into the composition as it moves up towards the top. I'm covering most of the paper with this. Just let this kind of happen. And then I'll start to uh, hone in a little bit. So I'm going to take a little of this viridian with the um, with the ultramarine violet and get some of that happening here. Just lay some of that down. Get some of that going. Take a little of that manganese violet and lay a little of that in. And we'll just push this in, get a little darker value into some of these areas, but catch it while it's still wet so I can get just a kind of a nice general um, shape and value that's going to move up through the composition here. You see, as I'm doing this, you see that stronger dark, it starts to make that pop. And I'll vary this so it's not all the same color and the same dark coming in with a little of that manganese violet. This is you see, just through there, starting to bring that out. And as the paper's drier, you know, that's a good thing. 
uh, I think, well, that's still uh, a little damp up there. I'm going to move back down, work in another area. Checking, see how damp the paper is, how dry or how damp it is. And uh, the reason for that is I want a stroke or two that has a dryness to it. You see, I want that sparkle and the dryness that's coming across the composition. And so we'll, we'll just uh, make that happen. You see, just kind of let that sparkle happen because of the paper. When I come down in here, uh, I'm going to hit a, a note or two. That's going to be basically a reflection of this um, of this um, tree. Just get a feel for that. Come back to a little deeper green and pick that up. down and through here, and let some of that even move down below. Reflections can actually kind of just pull all the way through there. And um, so that's soften an edge or two. And it gives me nice vertical pattern that's gonna repeat some of this over here.